Good morning, Eagles. I'm Gabe. And I'm Javon from Eagle News First Hour. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first story we will see today is Tegan about student led wind. Good morning, Eagles. My name's Tegan, and today I'm going to be talking about student led wind time. Let's start off by talking to Grace and Jaden about student led wind time. Hi, I'm Grace, and I'm your Stuco president. And I'm Jaden, and we are part of the Stuco wind time committee. We wanted to let you know about an exciting opportunity. You will have the opportunity to show off your talents, your hobbies, and your interests to your friends during wind time in the week of January 14th. You will be able to lead in one session about your talents, hobbies, or interests. Next Monday, you will fill out a survey during advisory if you would like to lead a wind session and what that topic would be. The Stuco Wind Committee will select sessions to offer from the responses to the survey. Students that are leading the session will be paired up with the teacher. You will sign up the same way we have before in the wind wall system. We want this to be a success and fun for us all. Please sign up to lead a session with the survey next Monday. Let's work together and make this awesome. You may see some of these signs up about student-led wind time, like this one behind us. Thank you, everyone. Remember, this coming Monday, you can take a survey if you would like to lead a wind session. The wind sessions will take place in January. Thank you, Grace, Jaden, and Mr. Lutz for your time. In conclusion, student-led wind time is a great opportunity to show off your talents to your friends. Thanks for watching. Back to you. need a student-led wind session. The second topic today is, will be NFL Power Rankings with Alex and I, then the NFL Playoff Picture with Caden. Good morning, Eagles. I'm Gabe. And I'm Alex. From the Eagle News First Hour. Our story today is about the NFL Power Rankings. Our topics for you today are going to be the top 10 teams in the Power Rankings, the worst teams in the NFL, and enemies. Put the Rams at number one because they have the best overall team, in my opinion, with their offense and their defense. Uh, we put the Chiefs at number two because we think Patrick Mahomes is doing a great job moving the ball and leading the offense. They're, the Chiefs' defense isn't the best, but they're doing a really good job stopping other teams' offenses. We put the Saints at number three because they have a really good quarterback, Drew Brees, and they have a decent de defense. We put the Chargers at number four because they might not have the best record, but their defense is doing a really good job not allowing lots of points, and Philip Rivers is just having a great season. Put the Texans at number five because Deshaun Watson is a very good quarterback and they have one of the best defenses in the league. Uh, we put the Patriots at number six because, like always, Tom Brady's doing a great job moving the ball and leading the offense, and their defense is doing a pretty good job. We put the Bears at number seven because they have also one of the best defenses in the league. We put the uh, Ravens at number eight because Lamar Jackson, he just got uh, into the league, and he's as a rookie, he's doing really good. He's just doing a great job with the offense. And right now, the Ravens, I personally think that they have the best defense in the league because they've allowed the least amount of points out of all the teams. You put the Cowboys at number nine because, because Dak Prescott is doing a really good go job, and they have Ezekiel Elliott, which is one of the best running backs in the league, and their defense is getting really good every week. We put, we put the Seahawks at number 10 because we think that uh, Russell Wilson is honestly carrying the offense. They don't really have their star receivers anymore or their star running back. And their defense, they kind of just lost all of their their star players like Cam Chancellor, Earl Thomas, and Richard Sherman. So they're kind of like ranked lower this year and they don't have the best record. Who are the worst teams in the NFL to you? Um, right now, I'm thinking that uh, the Jets are really bad. They've been bad for a while. The Bills are a decent team, but I don't see them as a great team. And then the Ravens, even though they we played, they played a pretty tough game against the Chiefs yesterday. Um, I don't think they're super great. They have a pretty okay record. Who are your least favorite teams? Uh, the 49ers, Broncos, and Jets. In the NFL, St. Louis Rams, Houston Cowboys, and. Overall, we hope you enjoyed our story on the NFL Power Rankings. Make sure you watch NFL football on Sundays, Mondays, and Thursdays. Back to you, Lakers.
the Eagles. I'm Kane from Eagle Miss First Hour. And in my story, I'll be talking to you about the NFL playoff picture. The first thing you should know is who's in as of right now in the AFC. In the AFC, the Chiefs are the only team to make the playoffs and can clinch the division on Thursday against the Chargers. The number one and number two seeds are the 11-2 Chiefs and the 9-4 and four Patriots. These two teams, as of right now, will get a first round bye. The four teams in the wild card are the Ravens, Texans, Chargers, and the Steelers. The Ravens would play the Texans, and the Chargers would play the Steelers. The second thing you should know is who is in as of right now in the NFC. In the NFC, the Rams and Saints have already clinched the playoffs. They both have an 11-2 and record. These two teams, as of right now, would get a first-round bye. The four wildcard teams, as of right now, are the Vikings, Bears, Seahawks, and the Cowboys. The Vikings would play the Bears, and the Seahawks would play the Cowboys. The third thing you should know is what teams could make possibly make the playoffs. In the AFC, the teams that are knocking on the door and could make it to the playoffs are the Dolphins, Colts, Titans, Broncos, and the Browns. Of course, these teams have to have certain teams lose or win, but I'm not going to name them. In the NFC, there are only three teams that are close to making it to the playoffs. They are the Redskins, Panthers, and the Eagles. And that is the NFL playoff picture. Thank you for watching this story on Eagle News. And back to you, Andrew. I love the Chiefs. They're the best team, no doubt. They will go to the Super Bowl. Hi, Drew with you, Javon. I'm going to go with the Chiefs. Christmas is coming up. Let's go and see some holiday traditions with Tristan Avery Eagles. Nichols. My name is Avery. My name is Tristan. And my name is Javon. I'm the Eagle, Eagle News First Hour. Today we'll be telling you about holiday traditions. From putting up the Christmas tree to hanging lights. So what you do on Christmas morning? <laughs> Holiday traditions. Mine's putting up the Christmas tree with my family. It's like 12 feet tall and barely fits in our living room. We put candy canes, lights, and ornaments on it. Let's go talk to other people and see what they do for holiday tradition. You put up a Christmas tree. Yes, we do put up a Christmas tree. In fact, we have two. We have one with all my kids' little ornaments that they've been gifted, and then we have another one that's just kind of like a themed tree. And what do you do on what do you do on Christmas? What's one of your traditions? One of our traditions, or one of my favorite traditions, is usually the Saturday before Christmas. I do lots and lots and lots of Christmas baking with my mom. Do you put up a Christmas tree? Yes, we have uh, two Christmas trees. But... What What is your favorite Christmas holiday tradition? Um, probably stayed up all night the night before with my brother. We... Do you put up a Christmas tree? Uh, we have a Christmas tree. It goes uh, in our front entryway. It's, a, it's pretty big. It's got lots of ornaments from when we were uh, uh, children. Uh, my wife's got like, all these collectible Barbie ornaments. So it's pretty big. What is your favorite Christmas holiday tradition? Uh, one of the things we like to do in our family is order pizza, uh, grab some soda, and get in the car and go and drive around for Christmas. Holiday traditions can vary from family. You could open presents on Christmas morning, you could decorate cookies, eat certain foods on Christmas, and you can go to your grandma's. Now let's see what people's, people's holiday traditions are from the South Island. Do you put up a Christmas tree? Yes. Do you hang up lights in your house? Yes. And what do you do on Christmas? My family comes over. Do you put up a Christmas tree? Yeah. Do you put up lights? Yes. And what do you do on Christmas? We open up presents in the morning and then we go to my aunt's house. Do you put up a Christmas tree? Yes. Do you put, hang up lights? Yes. What do you do on Christmas Day? We open up huge's um, Christmas Eve and then we open up for presents. Like there are a lot of different Christmas traditions and lights are one. There are lots of different lights from LED to normal. There are lots of light shows in Kansas City, like the Pleasant Valley Baptist Church and the house in your neighborhood. Some lights can go with music and some are just normal. What kind of traditions does your family have? Do you put Christmas lights up? Yes. What color? Red and white. Do you put Christmas lights up? Yeah. What color? Red and blue. Do you put Christmas lights up? No. Do you put Christmas lights up? Yes. What color? White. Thank you for watching our story on Christmas trees, Christmas lights. Hope you have a great Christmas, Sarah. 
holiday tradition is giving Santa his cookies and milk. I will turn over to Alex and Nathan for top five Christmas movies. Well, I'm Alex. And I'm Nathan from Even Just Fresh Out. Today on our story, we'll be talking about the top five Christmas movies of 2018. The five Christmas movies we are going to be talking to you about today is Home Alone, The Nightmare Before Christmas, Christmas Story, Elf, and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Number one, Home Alone, which is a movie, movie about an eight-year-old boy named Kevin who is left home by his family on Christmas vacation and he is left by himself to protect the house from a pair of burglars. Number two, A Christmas Story, which is based on the humorous writings of author John Sh Jean Shepard. This beloved holiday movie follows the exploits of youngster Ralphie Parker, who spends most of his time dodging a boy and dreaming of his ideal Christmas gift, a Red Ryder air rifle. Elf, it is, a, it is about an adult named Buddy, who is accidentally transported to the North, North Pole as a toddler, and raised to adulthood among Santa's elves. Unable to shake the, f the feeling that he doesn't fit in, the adult buddy travels to New York in full elf uniform and tries to search for his real father. Number four, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. In this live action adaption of the beloved child's tale by Dr. Seuss, the Green Grinch decides to run Christmas for the cheery citizens of Whoville. Reluctantly joined by his uh, hapless dog, Max, the Grinch comes down from his, top, his mountain top home and sneaks into the to swipe everything holiday related from the Who's. However, the brighter grump finds a hitch in his plans when he encounters the endearing Cindy Lou Who. The Nightmare Before Christmas. The film follows the adventure of Jack Skeleton, Halloween Town's beloved Pumpkin King, who has become bored with the same annual routine of frightening people in the real world. When Jack accidentally stumbles upon Christmas a uh, Christmas on Christmas Town, all bright colors and warm spirits he gets a he gets a new lease on life. He plots to bring Christmas under his control by kidnapping Santa Claus and taking over the role. But Jack soon discovers even the best laid plans of mice and skeletons, men can go seriously wrong. Thanks for watching this week's story on the top five Christmas movies. Back to you, Akers. Christmas vacation didn't make the list. Anyways, let's go ahead over to Carson and Sean about the big news of the week. Good morning, Good morning Eagles. Eagles. I'm Carson. And I'm Sean from Eagle News First Hour. Today we'll be going over the top stories of the week. Our first topic will be in George H.W. Bush's death. George Bush was a great leader of the United States. He was the 41st president. In his time of service, the Berlin Wall came down and he passed a bill called Americans with Disability Act, which was another one of his great achievements. He was also in the Navy and the youngest pilot at his time in the Navy. He also served as the Vice President for Ronald Reagan Ambassador to the United Nations and Director of the CIA. Our second topic will be about sports. The Lakers flew past the Spurs in a 121-113 victory, while the Raptors snapped Philadelphia's three-game win streak with a 113-102 victory. Russell Westbrook passed Jason Kidd in all-time triple doubles with 108. The New York Six Bowls are the Cotton Bowl between Clemson and Notre Dame, Orange Bowl between Oklahoma and Alabama, the Peach Bowl between Michigan and Florida, and the Fiesta Bowl between UCF and LSU, the Rose Bowl between Washington and Ohio State, and the Sugar Bowl between Texas and Georgia. Our third topic will be on deadly snowstorms that has passed through the Carolinas. As much as two feet have fallen and four people have died from the storm, one guy got out of his truck and shoveled snow, and after he had been suffering for a while, he went into cardiac arrest. The big stories from the past week. Thanks for watching the Storm Eagle News. Back, Back to you, Anchors. I can't believe all of that. Now let's head over to Sam B and Sam D on the top five songs. Hi, Sam. We are from Hit Canadian YouTube Enterprise Watch Mojo Incorporated. 60% 60 60 of our, our viewers, viewers are male. male gender. We Each Watch Mojo, Mojo are one of one the of largest, largest YouTube corporations. YouTube. We have over 97 billion views and are one of the largest and most subscribed to YouTube channels. Uh, today we're going to be telling you about the top five songs. Number five, Soldier Boy, Boy hit, hit that, that, crank that, that Soldier Boy, Boy hit that, that, crank that. Number four is an, is an epic, epic K-pop anthem, Gangnam Style. Number three, Flamingo. Number, Number two, two, any song by right Ween, including Ocean Man. Number one, hit classical composition by Stravinsky. Run to soundtrack. 
And remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment down below to join my free gift card giveaway. And remember, subscribe to PewDiePie. This has been Watch Mojo, and come back next week for another legit food review. Now let's head over to Race about new video games being released. I'm Mark Eagles, I'm Race from the England Lewis First Star, and today my topic will be on video games released in 2018. The following few things you will learn about my topic are what games have been released, what platforms they are available on, and how much it will cost. The first game is Madden 19. Madden 19 is available for PS4, Xbox One, and Windows. Madden 19 costs $60. The next game is Spider-Man. Spider-Man is a PS4 exclusive. Spider-Man costs $60. The third game is Fallout 76. Fallout 76 is available for PS4, Xbox One, and it is on Windows. Fallout 76 is the same price as Spider-Man at $60. Another game is Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is available for PS4, Xbox One, and Windows. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 costs $60 just like Spider-Man and Fallout 76. The last game is Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 2 is available for PS4 and Xbox One, but it's not available for Windows. Red Dead Redemption 2 costs $60. To recap, the two things you learned in my story were what video games have been released, what platforms they are available for, and how much they cost. With some of that Christmas one, I'm going to buy some Robux for my sister. That would be nice. Let's head over to Lacey about the SMS band concert. Good morning, Eagles. I'm Lacey from the Inca News First Star. Today, my story will be on the band. The two things you should know is what it takes to prepare for a concert and what we are playing. Here's a sneak peek of the concert from Monday night. What do you play? Uh, I play the trumpet. I play the clarinet. Uh, I play the tuba. The flute. Trombone. I play the French horn. Uh, alto sax and very sax. I play the bass clarinet. Uh, what's the most difficult and least difficult about playing? Probably remembering all the word definitions. Uh, probably reading the notes and also the figurings are easy. The most difficult thing for me is playing all the scales and stuff like that. Uh, probably the, honestly I really don't know what's the most difficult about being or not. Um, I don't really think anything's that difficult, the least difficult thing would probably be benchmarks, they're pretty easy. The most difficult is trying not to get hit back in the back of the head with this kid's trombone thing. I've never done that though. once. You come this close. <laughs> and the least difficult is getting to class on time. Uh, I'd say the most difficult, there really isn't one. I mean, and the easiest, I'd say, is about the benchmarks. They're pretty easy. Uh, there's not really a most difficult, but like the easiest is probably uh, telling people that they're doing it wrong. Uh, what song do you like the best in the concert? Uh, probably Old McDonald's. Uh, I mean, the most. Um, I'm an Bell Carol. Oh, yeah. I love peace. Yeah. Um, probably March of the Belgian Bird Troopers. Um, scenes from the Nutcracker. Scenes from the Nutcracker. Uh, March of the Belgian Troopers. Um, I like uh, scenes from the Nutcracker. You learn what it takes and what we have. Sixth, seventh, and eighth grade on your band concert. Show the broadcast with Adam and Michael on Christmas presents for eighth grade boys. What's up, Eagles? <laughs> I'm Domino. And I'm Adam, and today we'll be talking about the best eight Christmas presents. You can get for the eighth grade boys. Let's do this. Our first topic today will be about the PS4 game console. You can play various games on here as uh, Fortnite, uh, Call of Duty, and you can watch movies and watch YouTube. So that's why you would want a PS4. It's also around $300 to buy currently, but you can get the cheaper version of the PS4 Slim, which is like $200. An Xbox is our second thing. An Xbox is like a PS4. It costs around $300 to $400. It basically does the same thing as a PS4. 
Our third gift on this list for the eighth grade boy is a new iPhone, which is around eight hundred dollars. But like, you get a better phone, and if they're responsible, it can last them like twenty years. Our eighth Christmas present is new shoes. As you can tell, shoes can vary. We have um, running shoes, we have skate shoes, we have basketball shoes, and we have casual everyday wearing shoes. These shoes can all vary in prices. Thanks for watching our broadcast, Eagles. Have a great day, Eagles.